On to our feature of the night, and it is estimated that at least 700,000 people die annually from infections that are resistant to currently available antibiotics worldwide. Now, scientists are racing against time to find solutions to drug resistance by looking for newer, more advanced drugs or repurposing old ones. And as Emily Chabet reports in our feature tonight, the silent pandemic, simple steps like increased hygiene measures and use Using the right dosage of prescribed antibiotics will help reduce deaths as a result of antimicrobial resistance. Take a look. Antimicrobial resistance is a real, real pandemic. It's ongoing. Uh, unfortunately, not a lot of people realize. One of the reasons why we call antimicrobial resistance one of the biggest global threats is that we do see that a time will come <laughs> when there will be no viable solutions. When drugs are no longer effective, patients are helpless and scientists are warning of a new wave of dangerous germs that are completely resistant to drugs and especially antibiotics. The bacteria superbug has moved and is now resistant to the only weapon that could previously contain it. And people are now dying of common diseases like pneumonia and infections that were easily treatable a few years ago. Kasarani Estate within Kilifi Town, we meet Magnofia Mose Mohammed, a mother of three. Her third-born child, Promise Lawrence, is only one year, ten months old, but there is something amiss. He weighs only five kilograms as compared to the required weight between eight and eleven kilograms for a person his age. Promise developed jaundice three days after his birth. He had several other infections which led to a high uptake of drugs, mostly antibiotics. If a bacteria sees a particular drug for a long time, it's going to mutate, which means it changes something about its uh, genetic makeup to make it so that it can resist that drug. Magnofia has no stable job, and because she could not afford to take her child for specialized treatment, she chose the cheaper option of buying drugs over the counter, and sometimes neighbors donate what they have for the child to take. Something that scientists say is what has led to antimicrobial resistance because of underdose and sometimes overdose of these drugs. Dawa utapata za maumivu pale hospitali alafu nusu utambua ukanunua chemistry. Sasa ukifika kule chemistry utapata zile dawa mara nyingine sasa hauna pesa za kutosha unanunua nusu nusu ukipata tena utaenda kununua. When you don't have a lot of money you look for cheap solutions. But we say that if you don't treat an infection quickly and with the right drug, you actually are sicker for longer. Because also of lack of diagnostic services in many healthcare facilities, we always tend to think that um, we go to hospital and we look at the patient, we look at the history, and by interrogating the patients, we can probably do what we call a treatment using symptoms. According to a study done by Africa's Voices, poor knowledge of antibiotics and their proper use in Kenya has led to misuse. Poverty and unavailability of health facilities closer to the people have also exacerbated self-medication and purchase of drugs over the counter. Even though regulations for over-the-counter medication exist, the study expressed low level of enforcement. Most of our population can't afford the third, fourth, fifth generation of drugs. So we still have a lot of options in terms of um, what to use in case of a resistant infection. The downside is that many of them are not accessible or they're too expensive. Dr. Nigel Madara, pharmacist at Kilifi County Hospital, outlines various challenges in the fight against antimicrobial resistance. Data is lacking and uh, that is one of the biggest limitations we have. And because data is lacking, it means that uh, our care cannot be evidence-based. Doctors and pharmacists believe prevention is better than cure. We introduced certain vaccines, like we have introduced the vaccine for malaria last month. We introduced another vaccine for cholera, another vaccine for typhoid fever. What those vaccines will do is to prevent disease. 
and therefore will not have the need to treat them. We are going back to what people used to use before antibiotics, and they used to use viruses that attack bacteria. These are called bacteriophages. And as we speak in, Ke in Kemri, there are a number of groups that are already working on bacteriophages for different applications. Magnofia holds on to hope that her son will one day get well and play like other children. But in the meantime, she maintains cleanliness around her home and ensures her child is clean to prevent more infections. <laughs> Ona daktari amuangalie mtoto ndo akupatie dawa. Si umpatie ama ukaombe kwa jirani umpatie dawa mtoto nuhuwa zina mduru. Mara nyingine kwa sababu hujui ni ugonjwa gani unantateza mtoto. Antimicrobial resistance affects anyone irrespective of age or gender. It is a condition that is threatening a whole community. If affected, it means digging deeper into their pockets to purchase advanced drugs which are more expensive than normal antibiotics. It also means spending more days in hospital for common diseases. Yet simple steps like hygiene and taking the right dosage as prescribed by doctors can silence the pandemic. Emily Chabet, Citizen TV in Nairobi.